thank you for giving me the possibility of telling you a small story about motility and uh, cell shape and how this accelerates expansion. So I'm from the University of Copenhagen. We're training often, uh, also in this image. And uh, this is me, and this is the cool, nice uh, set of uh, young researchers that is working with me at the moment. Um, as you know, bacteria are very abundant in nature and they live in close proximity with other creatures like us. And a lot of what we know about these bacteria, we know from well-mixed liquid conditions, like in this test tube. And this here life of a bacteria is very promiscuous in the sense that there are no restrictions on the cell-cell contacts. So in such a joint community, a subpopulation with a specific genetic advantage will outcompete other subpopulations simply because they are fitter and grow faster. So still we know very little about the mechanics governing the spatial organization of bacterial communities. So my research is orbiting around the postulate that space matters. I'll give you an example. Um, in my lab, we did the following very, very simple experiment where we're mixing two strains of E. coli that are isogenic apart from a plasmid carrying uh, fluorescent color. Um, and then we mix inoculate on an agar surface and let them compete. And the result is a structured colony like this one, so which is often referred to as a halogenic pattern. And what is important to, uh, to note here is two things. First of all, that the expansion is linear. This means that when looking from the periphery of, uh, of the colony towards the center uh, along the radial vector, you're actually looking backwards in time. So in that sense, the present colony contains its own historical record. Another thing that I want to point out is that this, sec this strong segmentation of sectors, with, with sectors, so is uh, is produced by the fluctuations in the very early times of this colony, fluctuations on the the boundary of uh, of the um, original loculation droplet. In the sense that if one bacteria gets just a little bit ahead of its neighbors it will have priority on nutrients in space and ultimately form, be the ancestor of one of these sectors. So in space, it's not only a matter of being fit, but it's also very, very important to be at the right place at the right time. So, yeah, sorry, this was the proof there for the wave lag uh, patterning. Um, so we have recently finished a project where we investigated how small changes in aspect ratio changed the destiny of a colony. So we, uh, we used a set of so-called MREB mutants. And MREB is a, an actin homolog in bacteria that forms a helix along the cell length. And its mutants are both wider and shorter. So first we checked that all these mutants had similar fitness, which was the case. But when we let them compete against each other in these flasks, what we found it was that the shorter one would in all cases, in all cases that we can mix these strains, would have a relative fitness advantage. And in the most extreme case where we have the shortest competing against the wild type, the longest, uh, the shortest have an advantage, uh, will grow 40% more, 40 more than the longer. This is actually trivial results in the sense that the researchers that uh, originally found these mutants have already shown this. And it's also well in line with what we know from long-term evolutionary experiments, yeah. where we know that the E. coli will inflate mm -hmm. it, its volume by both shortening and widening. And that this morphological change often is related to uh, a mutation in the MREP genes. So next, what we did was to 
um, let them compete against themselves. So here we have two of the longer cells of the wild type in green and the wild type in magenta. And uh, we found that a pattern of very diffusive uh, boundaries. And the more diffuse, diffusive these boundaries are, the higher are the chance that two boundaries will meet and close off a sector. Uh, on top of this, the colony is expanding radially. So at some point, the chance of two boundaries meeting will be small. And, and from that point on, it seems that the patterns, if you look al along this radial vector, is freezing. Uh, so using this aspect ratio and a few other rules, we can, with a simple agent-based model, reconstitute these kind of patterns. We also let the mutants compete with themselves and find that longer aspect ratios will gives more diffusivity. This is also in line with what has already been found. And as a consequence, the shorter ones will have more straight boundaries. And as straight boundaries have a, sorry, a smaller chance of meeting, then there are finally, you end up with a pattern with much many, many more sectors, which means more intermixing of the two strains. And we could also say that it actually promotes diversity. The next thing we did um, was that we mixed the shortest, so which is here magenta, with the longest one, the wild type, and then we, we let them compete against each other. And what we found was that ultimately the long one would win the periphery and in that sense also the habitat. And this holds even when we outnumbered the long one, one to 1,000. It just took a bit longer. So after that, we try with all the different combinations we had in, in our little strain library. And this, this row actually corresponds to this column. And one or corresponds to the long one taking fully over and minus one, the short one taking over. But you can see when you have, when we let the, the two, the intermediate and the shortest one compete, well, when we really outnumber the intermediate one, it doesn't always win the habitat. So, but we wanted to know what was the mechanics behind this. And this single cell resolution experience gave us the clue. So here, this is the, is taken from inside the well-mixed inoculation droplet. And what I want to show you is that the, the shorter one is actually spreading much more symmetrically in, inside here, where the longer cells are doing these more jacked patches. And on the periphery, the result is that the, that the shorter one squeezes the longer ones into these channels of highly nematic ordering cells. And when on the and when these cells meet the front of the of the colony, they align with it and they divide along it. And ultimately they will close off the access for the shorter ones, the, their access to nutrients and space. And this is the method by which they win the colony. So um, our agent-based uh, model confirms that it is indeed the aspect ratio that is the determinant. So we also looked into the takeover rate in the sense that we look along the radius and then we measured the maximum speed by which this takeover happens. Um, and we found two things. One, that it's dependent on the, on the ratio between the long and the short. So if the short is, or if the long is outnumbered, the takeover is slow. This is uh, in line with what we would have expected. Another thing we saw, which was more striking, was that it seems that it also depends on the length of the shortest cell. So this case, you see that the, 
the speed, but the takeover speed is dramatically reduced. So we tested this in our agent-based model where we could actually continuously changing the length of the shorter uh, of the shorter cell. And we do indeed see a singularity that happening at the point where the shorter cell begins to be uh, is able to do nematic packing. And this causes a drop in the takeover uh, takeover speed. So what happens if we add another dimension? Um, so we have developed in our lab a method where we, instead of doing inoculation droplets, we do inoculation beads, which are just a, has a volume of uh, just a few nanoliters. And what we do is that we embed these, uh, these beads in, uh, in agar, um, in incubate, and then we see this kind of same structured patterns, but just in the 3D instead of 2D. And we, by segmentation, we get the surface of, uh, of these patterns and we make sure that we have this surface in a way that it's only one voxel uh, thick and that each voxel is assigned one and only one color. By this way, we can measure the occupancy of each strain on the cell or on the colony surface. Sorry. So, how is this different from uh, from the two D patterns? Well, there is a lot of similarities. So, one is that seeding when seeding density is enlarged. Well, then also the size of the final colony and the intermixing goes up. So, the how many sectors there is on the surface. And this is expected, but what was more surprising was that actually the patterns are more dynamic than in 2D, meaning that um, meaning that it's on the surface, it's not it's not um, frozen the pattern after some time. Actually, these uh, sectors on the surface will keep dividing and meeting as time goes by. So this could have uh, implications for gene fixation. But getting back to the, to the main story, the aspect ratio, what we did next was to mix them either in favor of the long one or in favor of the short one. And we found that um, they, still, they still have a, a fitness advantage, the long ones, even when we get down to... Uh, mixing one to 47, but this takeover is just much slower, which makes sense as uh, if you are a rod-shaped bacteria, it's easier to take over a ring along a periphery than a cover an entire surface, right? So you need really tight packing of these uh, to cover the surface in the same way. So the, as expected, this was slower. So to sum up on this part first, um, so aspect ratio is a winning strategy uh, in structured environments. And also I just learned that the Better Chachi Lab at the NCBS in Bangalore just published, um, they were put online at least, uh, results that, are, are, that has at least supports uh, it's somewhat different, but it still supports this conclusion. And then this was an example of how space matters in the sense that we found that there was a fitness advantage for the shorter one in liquid. And then on a 2D surface, surface sorry, this, um, this fitness advantage is completely flipped such that it's the long one that suddenly has an advantage. And furthermore, when we move from 2D into 3D, this advantage is retained, but weakened. Then before we end, I briefly want to say something about motility in a 3D structured environment. So for this project, what we did was to make uh, monoclonal now colonies uh, of motile E. coli cells. 
And we found when incub incubating these small colonies that around the mother colony, we found these small satellite colonies that were appearing all the way around. And they were characterized by some specific uh, volumes and distances where here you should take into account that maybe a lot of these very uh, satellites in proximity of the mother uh, colony has been like swallowed by the mother colony as times goes by. And uh, we could mimic this using a modified Edinburgh model where cells at each iteration can either grow or jump. And we just put it in as a jump because we expect this motility of a single cell leaving the mother colony to be on timescales that are faster than the growth. Um, and we found that the larger the jump rate, well, the faster this population of cells gets very abundant. And then we also uh, verify that this, this motility, that we don't know exactly what it looks like, but that it is flagella dependent in the sense that our flagella knockout also completely loses this satellite morphology. So with this, I want to make the point that motility speeds up expansion. So spherical expansion is linear in contrast to the exponent, exponential growth that we have in the test tube. But motility kind of helps us getting some, some of these intermediate stages. So, oops, sorry. So we have, for instance, uh, out here, somewhat out here, some stretched exponential uh, expansion, uh, which has been uh, thoroughly investigated theoretically by uh, Halishek and uh, co-workers. And has also been shown experimentally, for instance, for cancer metastasis models, um, also in our lab. And then there is some slower, but still super linear spread, which is uh, which comes as the result of this satellite uh, morphology. So with this, I want to say that. We still, there is still a lot we don't know about this interaction and also about the motility of the individual cells in, uh, inside the, this gel. Uh, to give an example, this is two E. coli uh, colonies, strains that are closely related, but not completely grown under the same conditions. And we don't fully understand why they have such different morphologies. Um, and this, to the right, we call it often a, a broccoli morphology. And uh, the Suji Data Lab at uh, Princeton has also looked into colonies grown on, in another gel um, and why and how this is actually the, it's not getting round and rounder with time, but more and more rough with time as there is local depletion of nutrients in these small valleys. So I want to end saying that there is still a lot that we don't know about growth and motility in uh, these kind of 3D uh, colonies, and especially about the mechanics that governs uh, both growth and motility. Then I want to end saying these are the people that actually did the experiments that I presented. So Mireia was uh, the lead on all the motility experiments, uh, Alba, and uh, Chang has developed uh, the 3D models uh, with, with multi, multi species 3D models. And then uh, Adrien, Chang, and uh, Nathan has been in charge of all the aspect ratio uh, experiments. And there, I also want to point out Christian Thiessen, who was the main driver of the agent based models in that uh, system. And then the, my dear collaborators, which were involved in the projects that I uh, just told you about. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>